There are many reasons you might want to stream your Nintendo Switch gameplay to platforms like YouTube and Twitch. Whether you just want to go live for your own enjoyment, build a fun community around the games you love, or become a famous streamer with your own energy drink collabs, I'm going to show you exactly what you need and how to do it. So first off, how does it work? Normally, when you use your Switch while docked, you send a video signal to your TV via the HDMI cable that comes from the Switch dock. All we're doing is hijacking that HDMI signal and running it through a capture card instead. The capture card converts that into a USB signal that can be plugged into your computer. Your computer then has encoder software to encode that video signal and send it to YouTube or Twitch for streaming or recording. The primary piece of hardware you probably need to buy is the capture card. The simplest are these capture cards that have an HDMI in and a USB out to go into your computer. With these, you need to watch your gameplay on your computer screen, but you're prone to some performance setbacks unless you have a really powerful system, and even then, you can't avoid a certain level of latency. The other kind of capture card is a pass-through card that splits the signal in two. One HDMI signal gets converted to USB and sent to your computer, and the other gets sent via HDMI to another screen, TV or a monitor, or a live zero latency view. This is the ideal situation, but these cards can be expensive. The only other primary piece of equipment aside from things that are ancillary like mics or other gear is your actual computer. Streaming Switch gameplay can be taxing on your system. On screen, you're looking at some basic requirements to run the streaming software itself. You also need to have a fairly reliable internet service. The exact minimum upload speeds depend on the resolution that you're aiming for. For a 1080p 60fps stream, 6 megabits per second is the minimum. Though with all the other processing going on, you'll probably want something a bit higher to remain consistent. Next up is software. The only real software you need to record and stream is an encoding software program. This is a program that allows you to build your streaming scene and encode it into video files or stream it to a streaming platform. There is a neat list of YouTube approved options provided by Google. I'll link this along with all of YouTube's streaming help resources, which can answer a lot of questions in the description. I'm going to be showing you how to do everything in OBS Studio. It is the completely free and open source software of choice for recording and streaming. There is a more streaming oriented platform called Streamlabs OBS, but there are paid tabs and advertising for the paid version built into the program, but it is very powerful and lets you easily upgrade your stream with extra elements. Anything we do today will work essentially exactly the same there, and I can cover it more deeply another time, but I'd rather use the open industry standard for teaching purposes. OBS Studio also has a slightly better set of minimum requirements and should run a bit better for most people. Okay, now we're in OBS. I reset all my settings so that you can follow along. Our stream screen is going to be composed of scenes, and in those scenes, we have sources. Their sources are what they sound like. That's where our video and audio inputs are going to come from. The first thing we'll do is add a video capture device input. You can name it Switch Video, and then under the Device tab, you can pick USB 3.0 Capture or whatever your capture card shows up as when plugged in. You can select some presets right off the bat, or you could go in and dial all these settings in yourself. You can change the resolution, the color space, and a few other details that will affect the quality of your video. It's always best to run at the highest resolution that your computer can handle for the best viewing experience. Next, we're gonna add our switch audio input. We'll pick audio input capture from the sources tab, and we'll name it switch audio. This one is a bit more straightforward. You just pick the device from the list. It should be named the same thing as your video input, or at least something related. Now in the audio mixer, you'll notice there's an extra track. If you want to actually hear what's coming in through one of these inputs, you have to open up the advanced audio properties and toggle monitoring for each of the tracks that you want to actually listen to through your speakers or headphones. I want to hear the switch audio, so I'm going to set it to monitor and output. So I'll both be able to monitor the audio and it will be output to the stream or recording. Next, we're going to go into our settings to adjust a few things. If you're having trouble with monitoring, you should go in here under Advanced, under Audio, and pick a proper monitoring device like speakers or headphones that you use. You should also take a look around the streaming and recording tabs in there and make sure that you're using the highest settings that you can while still being able to run it comfortably for your computer. The next thing you'll probably want to add if you're streaming is your mic. So we'll add another audio input capture and this time we'll select our microphone. I use a blue snowball mic. Now you'll notice we added another track to our audio mixer. So we're going to turn on monitoring and output for that also. So now I can hear both the switch audio and my voice and I can adjust the volume so that they're not overlapping with each other too much. Next we can go over some ways to personalize your stream. 
So your scene is customizable. It's really a canvas and you can move around the elements in it. You can add an image through an image source in the sources panel, or you can just drag a picture in for a background. You can drag them above or below each other in the sources tab to place them however you'd like. You can even have a video in the background as an animated stream background, and you can add other elements around the border frames. If you can only run a lower resolution with your computer, then shrinking down the video frame might make it less obvious to viewers. Lastly, as a streamer, you might want to add in your webcam. My hair's not done, so I'm going to skip that step, but it's really easy. You would just select your webcam from the list under the video input capture. I'm going to replace my webcam with this small picture of Pikachu. You can then customize your scene by putting your webcam wherever you want and play around with it until you have something that you like. There are also tons of settings on all of the components in the scene. You can transform them, add filters to them, and adjust them until everything is looking just right. Now, if you don't want to play on that small window in the middle of OBS, you can right click on the canvas and select windowed projector to have a separate window to see your game, or you can set it to full screen. Now, when you're streaming, you're probably going to want to be looking at some stream data and making sure that everything is going right. So you might not want to do the full screen, but the pop out window is really useful. Now we'll go into the settings and go into the stream setting and look at the two ways that you can connect a stream to your OBS. The first one and the recommended one by OBS is to connect your account. You go through a Google login portal or a Twitch login portal, and then your account will be connected to OBS. You can then hit start streaming to connect a stream to your YouTube account directly from OBS. There are a few things to learn here, like the fact that you need to set up and manage a broadcast, and then you can go live on that broadcast. This is not my preferred method. I rather use a stream key that I get directly from YouTube, but we'll go over this one quickly. All of these settings mirror settings that are in the YouTube streaming dashboard, but it could be more convenient for you to just do it from here. It's up to personal preference. You can give it a title, a description, adjust your settings, and then go live with the broadcast. Then all you have to do is hit start streaming. You'll notice on the bottom right, you have some new settings. It's important to monitor these so you can see how long you've been live for, if you had any drop frames, and how taxed your CPU is right now. Later, when you go into YouTube Studio, it might take a few minutes, but you'll notice that your live replay has turned into a video on demand that you can edit. The other way to stream, and my preferred, is to use a stream key. To do this, you'd go into YouTube Studio and hit go live. Then you'd go into this streaming dashboard. And if you notice, a lot of these options will be the same as they were in the connected account version. The difference is that you have a few more options here in terms of analytics, viewer activity, and stream health. You can see the chat a little bit easier. What you want to do is copy this stream key and take it over into OBS and just paste it into the stream key field. You want to keep that private because if someone knows your stream key, then they can just start streaming on your account, which would not be good. Once you set that up in the settings, all you have to do is hit start streaming and you're off. The YouTube streaming dashboard is really helpful. It lets you know the condition of your connection right here. It says excellent connection. And like we said before, it offers you a little bit more insight into managing your stream. Now you can play around with your window setup. Maybe you want to be playing on the windowed projector mode and put that next to the YouTube streaming dashboard. Now you can play your game, talk to your viewers, and reply in the chat. Now there is a delay and there is a setting to adjust the latency on that delay. With all of this, you should be off to the races and able to stream whenever you want. Good luck and remember to have fun. Streamlabs OBS that I mentioned earlier has a lot of built-in options for adding widgets and things like chat boxes, etc. on the screen. So if you're interested in learning how to use it and how to add some of those to your stream easily, let me know in the comments. And have a lovely day.